So now, what I'd like to do is introduce our first speaker, um, and I'm going to put that up, uh, Gerald Cantoni. Uh, Gerald is the job coach at the Coffee Shed at Surrey Place Centre. Uh, the Coffee Shed recently used crowdsourced funding to raise funds for a barista training program that will help to 17 business partners with developmental challenges in fully fledged uh, baristas. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm really humbled to be here. Um, just about six months ago, or less than a year ago, this was just a dream project, and now I am presenting it um, in front of all of you. And hello to all the people online, so I wish you guys were here. Um, but my name is Gerald uh, Fantoni. Um, thanks for the introduction. Um, and I am the founder of Made by Mavericks. Uh, it's a collaboration actually between Common Ground Cooperative, who I work with, so I job coach uh, for Common Ground. So I primarily support a social enterprise called Coffee Shed and also uh, Cleanables. So it's a pretty unique uh, organization that we support people with developmental challenges uh, by opening social enterprises throughout the city. So right now we have about three coffee sheds, um, one lemon, lemon and all spice, which is a catering uh, company. Uh, and they also make all the baked goods that the coffee sheds sell. And also cleanables, which is a cleaning service that cleans uh, toys. Um, so this is a collaboration that I uh, did with, uh, with uh, the coffee shed at Story Place Center and also Common Ground Cooperative. Uh, and a little bit of background from um, a little bit of background about myself uh, before I go on to the actual how I managed to crowdsource the funding for it. I actually uh, first worked as an arts uh, facilitator for Drama Way, and they're actually having their class right next door. Um, and Lindsay Selene was one of my students. Um, she's right there in the red shirt. Um, uh, so that's where I got my start, and I also uh, freelance as a filmmaker uh, and also as an educator in film. Uh, that came in really handy actually with this campaign, so that's why I just kind of like wanted to mention that. So getting right on to uh, Made by Maverick, so I'm just kind of here to talk about how I managed to uh, source out the startup funds for the project. Unfortunately, as much as Comgren wanted to um, help us with this venture, uh, funding is quite you know stiff to get, and with uh, a recent training program, equipment's very expensive, so we had to find our own way to uh, fundraise it. So here comes crowdfunding. Um, so our target goal was $5,000. So $5,000 to cover all the equipment and also to cover some of the perks that we would have to give up uh, for all the donors. And we ended up getting $11,000, which I thought was really amazing. Uh, 6000 of that came from the crowdfunding and $5,000 came from an online voting contest. Uh, uh, called Start Something with a Less. So starting off the crowdfunding uh, through Indiegogo, so that ran um, over the holidays. It's, we started that in November of last year and then ran, um, started planning it in November and ran it in uh, December up until January. And right after that, we ran uh, the Start Something with a Less uh, competition. So I actually just wanted to step away from the PowerPoint and show you the video um, that we had on the crowdfunding page. The Coffee Shed is a business partnership of people with developmental disabilities who are using the skills and talents they have to create employment for themselves. It's one of the many social enterprises supported by Common Ground Cooperative, a unique nonprofit organization that promotes the inclusion of persons with developmental disabilities in empowered workplace settings. The Coffee Shed at Surrey Place Center began in 2001 and has grown immensely throughout the years. Currently, 17 business partners work together in running their cafe and catering services. The Coffee Shed helps people with disability get a job and teach them traits that will help them come into competitive employment for the future. When I first came here, I didn't talk a thing. But now that I, I got used to it, I, I'm getting to talk, I talk with people and stuff. And it makes me feel good because I, I always feel that 
everybody needs to hang around people and have someone to talk to. Well, I think it's very important to have a job because, of course, everybody needs to live and they need to have a job to live. As a pilot project in 2013, for the first time ever, the coffee shed experimented with a manual espresso machine. It proved to be a challenge at first, but after a series of training and lots of trial and error, it became a huge success. Customers rave about the espresso, and it's proof that persons with developmental disabilities, when given the proper training and support, can make amazing coffee. Now they're ready to go big. The Made by Mavericks project aims to equip the coffee shed with a commercial grade espresso machine and professional barista training to its business partners. This new addition will not only give the coffee shed a more competitive edge, but also provide the business partners with job skills geared for competitive employment. When you have a job, it actually gives you a sense of accomplishment and you accomplish something. It will help you with uh, uh, independent living um, and it will also help you to get money, more money and to make new friends. Well, you can rely on people for something, but don't want to rely on them for the rest of your life. Like with money and stuff, like I said, so you can basically take charge of your own life. This is where you come in to help. Your donations will cover all equipment costs and all necessary training to get everything set up and running. All donations also come with amazing perks that are personalized and handmade just to show their appreciation. And when you're done, make sure to spread the word and share the campaign. After all, every little bit counts. Well, that's just to give you a bit of a background um, about Common Ground and also how this idea started. Um, and going back to the PowerPoint, and there we are. So just a few analytics about the crowdfunding campaign. So it ran for 45 uh, days. Uh, it was set to flexible funding. So there's two ways when you're doing a crowdfunding. So flexible funding is uh, you hit a, you have a target goal. If you don't make it at the end of that, um, at the end of your period, you still get all the money. There's also fixed funding um, where you can choose to, if you don't uh, get your goal, if you don't uh, uh, achieve your goal, then you don't get any of the money. Um, with a flexible funding, there's higher percentage that Indiegogo takes or whatever uh, company you decides to go with to host the crowdfunding campaign. So uh, sometimes people go with uh, fixed funding, um, but there's bigger risk that you won't get any of the, any of the money. So we ended up going with flexible funding. Um, we had 108 funders and actually about uh, 80% of the people who funded the campaign, I don't know personally, so I thought it was also successful in that end. Um, we had 2,283 site visits and referrals uh, throughout the 45-day period. Um, we had six media um, features, inclu including the Toronto Star, um, and the goal was reached in 37 days, so just a week uh, before our campaign ended. Um, and I know that the crowdfunding page uh, says uh, 5,000, um, I think $400, there were actually a few donors who gave us uh, checks who didn't want to go through the payment online. So that's why our final target was, uh, our final goal, our, our final funding was $6,000 for the crowdfunding. Um, I've also been a part of other crowdfunding before. As I've said, I've uh, also freelanced as a filmmaker on the side and I've done that. Um, and I've also been a part of a lot of failed uh, crowdfunding uh, campaigns. So I've definitely learned a lot from those experiences. And I think, you know, I've harnessed everything that I knew and applied it to this. And, you know, I was just, we were just lucky enough to hit our goal. So thank you for those who supported the campaign. I noticed a few of you um, who were uh, sharing it and donated to the campaign. So thank you again. Um, so just a few of the things that uh, helped us. Uh, 
achieving that goal is the first thing is to have a full plan. I actually knew about um, our participation for the Start Something with a Less Competition before we launched the crowdfunding campaign. And we wanted to use the crowdfunding to leverage the project further um, to hopefully get people to vote for Start Something with a Less. Um, we also plan to hold the crowdfunding campaign during the holiday time when usually people are more giving at that time. Uh, and also wanted to end it um, just right before tax season started. Uh, so those are just a few logistical things that we thought of. Um, we also had to make sure that for those 45 days, we could engage our audience. Uh, a lot of times, campaigns get stuck with having a big introduction, and then it kind of just dies down from there. Uh, so we kind of had to plan out things that we had to show. We had to post on Facebook, uh, articles that we could you know, interest people in, um, and other news that we could share. Uh, and we definitely uh, kept updating a lot of our um, funders on how the project is going and also produce more videos just to entice them to keep sharing the campaign and just create buzz for the project. Um, another big key, uh, especially for us, and I think especially for anyone creating a crowdfunding campaign, is to have a strong social media presence. And this is really the work that happens before the crowdfunding. So it's just growing your Twitter based uh, and growing uh, your Facebook followers. Uh, uh, reaching out to people, uh, you know, having a, a grouping your emails into different uh, groups, so it's just easier when you send out emails. Uh, so just having a good social media presence and already having an audience there. So when you, when we were actually able to release the crowdfunding page, uh, we already got the bus going. So that was a big help. Um, also have interesting perks uh, that's often related to your cost. Uh, a lot of our perks were uh, products that are sold at the coffee shed and also made at, uh, at Lemon and Allspice. The most popular one actually is uh, this artwork, which was uh, done by one of the partners who work at the coffee shed. His name is Beecher. Uh, this is a print. I actually bought a bunch of copies of these. If, if, if anyone's interested, they're on the table. Um, but this is the most popular perk. This was uh, for hundred dollars so this was the most popular one um, but other things that we had there we had mugs that were signed by all the partners who work at the coffee shed we had baked goods we had tour of the different enterprises uh, which is our biggest uh, uh, donor level and we also had uh, yeah, I mentioned cookies, I mentioned uh, a lot of the baked goods, uh, and I definitely maximize a lot of the strength of the uh, partners that I work with. Uh, again, utilizing their talents with this, they signed the mugs, they created all the postcards. Uh, so it also created a little personal touch, so I think that helped. Uh, another thing is a strong marketing campaign, um, and that's really, I think, that's how everything blew up, is through the marketing that we used. Uh, uh, I'm gonna show you in a little bit a few of the posters that we use. I wanted to sway away from the very traditional uh, inspirational image that's often uh, matched with uh, the development services sector, and I wanted to have a very uh, fresh and very strong um, campaign, um, primarily because our audience were um, young professionals who are very you know, tech savvy and uh, a lot of our funders will be you know, using the internet a lot. So uh, we wanted to be able to uh, stimulate them with you know, very uh, punchy uh, marketing. So that's what we wanted to go for. Uh, another big thing is to use the resources available. Um, crowdfunding is basically free. We just have to uh, source out all the talents that you can get and any help that you can get. Uh, so I had a photographer friends who helped me take the pictures. Um, I had, uh, I had uh, friends and family share the campaign to as many people as they can. Um, and we also reached out to a lot of our customers, which was uh, quite helpful. Uh, we ended up having little stickers on uh, on all the cups, so all the coffee that were sold had a little sticker on it to tell them about the campaign. Um, and one other thing that's very important that I think is also forgotten is to reach out to media. And most of the time, they will not respond. You'll probably, out of probably 20, I got one response. And it just so happens to be now Toronto. Um, and they were really pleased about the project. Um, and 
I, we used that to bring their project forward and le leverage on that. So I actually did the first uh, uh, media interview for Made by Mavericks on Christmas Eve, and I was about to go on a flight to Asia. Um, but I really, there was no other choice, either to hold off on this or, yeah, or do it then. Um, but I actually was pleased that I did it then, because 40% uh, of our funders donated through by reading that article. So uh, that was a great help. Um, <laughs> And lastly, again, keep the energy going. I think uh, you know, there's a, a lot of people are very excited when you launch something new. Um, there's a lot of bus going around, but just keeping that going and keeping the momentum going, I think, is very important. And we did that by creating a lot of videos. If you go through the Maybe Mavericks crowdfunding page, you just see examples of our daily posts. Uh, a lot of other articles about you know barista training, uh, just coffee in general. Uh, also updates uh, where I got some of the partners working at the coffee sheds, uh, providing updates on how the campaign is going. Um, so a bunch of those stuff. So I think altogether helped us to achieve our goal. Um, so there were actually a lot of benefits to crowdfunding campaign. That's why we uh, we ended up going to that. So these are actually a few of the, the marketing plans that we had. It was a blast shooting these. Um, these were probably like one shot out of the 50 that we took and we got the perfect re uh, reaction and they had fun doing it. Uh, uh, we got their um, brave or like their you know, sharp and angry side. Uh, so, and yeah, I think they had a blast and I, I had a blast uh, taking their pictures. Um, but from what I was saying uh, before, so a few of the benefits of crowdfunding, it's free. Um, pretty much there's not much cost beside the perks that you have to give out and you know usually you would take whatever products that you have or anything around you um, and just a little wrapping makes it all great so we uh, spend a lot of time making sure that everything is wrapped up properly and um, had those so it looks it looks even better when people got them um, it also provides access to capital uh, it's basically that's risk-free uh, it was easier than um, going after grants and loans that are very competitive. Um, but we also knew that we would fail, but uh, we knew that there's, you know, there's really not much risk going to it, so we just went full out. Uh, there's also proof of concept. Um, I think it, there's something called viral marketing when you know people uh, comment on the project and we got a lot of supporters and it's kind of just gave me a boost or confidence that this is actually worth pursuing. Um, we had so many supporters and again, we have had so many of those press mentions and we also got uh, uh, co a coffee company in Spain, uh, Cafento, which is actually quite big, um, a little uh, to my knowledge, they're actually as big as Starbucks in Spain, um, and who have been actually very supportive of the project, sent us a huge package after we reached our crowdfunding campaign, gave us a lot of tips. So basically they hold an annual barista uh, competition uh, geared to uh, individuals with Down syndrome yearly. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite amazing actually what social media can do. Um, Again, a great marketing tool. You know, we were able to market uh, the project to so many, um, so many people, to so many countries. Even uh, great awareness for the project overall. As I said, you know, a few of the uh, articles who wrote were Toronto Star, Toronto Food, uh, Barista Magazine in Seattle. Uh, we have an article coming up in June, um, and that's an international magazine just primarily for barista, for baristas. Um, alternative grounds, and you know, uh, there's a cafe on Queen Street who pretty much sold us their uh, uh, grinders, which was very, which were very expensive, but we got them a very good deal. So it's a great uh, marketing tool. Um, and allows crowd, uh, crowdsourcing of brainstorming um, as well. Um, basically, we were able to get feedback from people of how, what were the challenges that people face, uh, the Cafento company uh, training people with uh, disabilities. Um, and it also introduces uh, a lot of uh, prospective participants. I got phone calls from parents um, who were interested of like enrolling their uh, kids. Um, we also had a lot of our clients wanting to enroll, so over all that. Um, so, and just briefly, just to wrap up, I wanted to focus more on the crowdfunding, but we also were part of the online voting contest, which was actually more difficult um, than the crowdfunding. Um, a big part of it basically is just getting votes from people. Um, so that's where we got the rest of our funding. $5,000 uh, are given to a nonprofit, and $5,000 are given to a for-profit idea. Um, it's a, a combination um, hosted by Pfizer. It happens every year. So I'm pretty sure you guys have seen all the posters um, uh, on the subway. It ran for seven weeks and we received votes from 25 countries, uh, which was kind of amazing. Um, again, a few of the tips. Uh, there's 
plenty of them out there. There's so many niche groups uh, from you know design competitions, from taking pictures of your pets, your kids. You can you know get some funding through that. You just have to kind of cater uh, your project to their need. Uh, again, a few voting tips, uh, tips for success for that one. Strong public relations strategy. Uh, we told Tron to start to wait uh, to wait a, a week or two before releasing that article. Um, we wanted to uh, we wanted to wait for start something with a less to launch and then a product start happen so that definitely was very helpful um, and be creative and tenacious in getting votes there's the traditional means we posted in almost every single Starbucks and the downtown core oddly enough um, uh, we kind of a lot of relevant organizations um, within uh, a lot of coffee companies um, who were very supportive of the project um, niche group on Facebook there's so many of them um, you know a lot of the groups within the disability organizations uh, um, us the uh, I was trying to um, circle 21 the Down syndrome Association uh, again Cafento there's a lot of uh, uh, groups of baristas also we advertised through them we got them to vote um, there's also something exchange votes on Facebook where you can actually vote for other people's contests and they vote you back so I did a lot of those um, almost on a daily basis um, we had also social forums so you can post some um, red flag deals on Craigslist and you can get people to vote through there and also personal favors so I've, uh, you know get your friends and family to vote for you um, my dad owns uh, an internet cafe in the Philippines um, basically he gave them free uh, internet access for half an hour if they voted for me and a lot of them yeah and a lot of them created fake accounts on Facebook just to get more um, free hours of internet gaming um, yeah so again just adding on to it um, those are the few our uh, daily reminders that we were sending out just to get people to vote um, a few of the benefits very similar to crowdfunding again it's free and there's really an abundance of it there's so many of these contests if you just search Facebook for like online voting contests you can almost find everything from like as I said taking a picture of your finger um, and, and putting that getting people to vote on that it's not really you know the merit it's more so your your marketing uh, that's more important um, and controlled out outcome you can kind of you know if you put a lot of effort into it uh, we were sending about 500 emails a day um, reaching out to uh, you know joining groups and like sending them personal messages so for seven weeks so uh, you know if you're persistent I think you can have a good outcome out of it and just to wrap it all up um, I know that I'm running a little bit out of time um, uh, where's made by Mavericks now so after uh, um, uh, two months of fundraising uh, we have now purchased all the equipment necessary to run the program so we're now doing our trial run so, so uh, the partners at uh, the coffee shed are now training to become baristas uh, uh, we started foaming milk this week, which is a bit of a scary thing. Uh, you know, it, it, I was also scared when I first foamed milk because you could burn yourself. Um, but it, it's fun, and I, you know, uh, business-wise, their sales have increased. Uh, it doubled actually over the last one that we've opened with the espresso bar. So it's definitely having a lot of positive impact, and it just gives new excitement for the partners working there. And we hope to be able to uh, offer the program to others in the fall. So, and that's it. So, thank you again.